confess our sins. See, it's up to me to confess my sins to God. It, it, it's my responsibility because I got myself in that mess anyway. I can't blame my, my wife for, for me sinning because I am responsible for my own spiritual walk. If for some reason she says something that, 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 that rubs me the wrong way, it's my responsibility to remind me of this. Uh, uh, that, to, to stay holy and, and righteous unto God, amen. But sometimes when we, when 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 something is said to us, we tend to respond or react, shall I say? Because respond would be godly, but reacting is ungodly at times, where it causes us to sin. Amen. So as soon as we do that, whatever it might be that's not pleasing to God, we must confess. To God about the sin and mm -hmm. let him know this is I cussed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I give mm -hmm. the bird <laughs> <laughs> what, or whatever I kick the cat mm -hmm. I kicked the dog or I, I overate because I was angry mm -hmm. oh, wow. sometimes we can do that stuff amen yeah. we'll overeat because we're angry or we won't yeah. eat because we're angry and, and we think we're punishing anybody, but it's, it's ourselves, amen? Mm -hmm. And it doesn't bring glory to God, amen? Mm -hmm. So if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The, the unrighteousness of man does not glorify God, amen? Mm -hmm. But we're all a work in progress, amen? amen. So don't be discouraged, okay? So deliverance is only as good as our obedience. Amen? We can only be, be delivered when we obey God and His Word. Do you, do you love God? Yes. yes. When you love God, you obey Him. Sometimes we get a little rambunctious and mm -hmm. disobey. Mm -hmm. I said we because I'm part of the body of Christ. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Freedom principle number two. For you who walked in, this, this is titled Freedom Principles for Daily Use. Basic stuff. It's hard stuff because even this first step is tough, right? Yes. No? Okay. <laughs> number two. When negative thoughts come, you must rebuke them and replace them with positive thoughts. When negative thoughts come. Ever had a negative thought? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. When negative thoughts come, we must rebuke them and replace them with positive thoughts. Okay? How are we doing? Okay? Mm -hmm. When negative thoughts come, we must rebuke them and replace them with positive thoughts. Now go to Philippians 4 8. Philippians 4 8. What's your first first reaction when, when you have a negative thought? Okay? Worry. Worry? Do you entertain it? Do you entertain the negative thought after a while when things are going bad? We kind of like, well, you're right, and yeah, that yeah. makes sense. And we, all of a sudden we get in the car with it, right? Mm -hmm. And by the time we know it, we're mentally worn out because we stepped into this negative puddle right. of nothing that has nothing to do with what God has said, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So go to Philippians 4 8. Everybody at Philippians 4 8. But before I read this, this verse is for us to apply. Do you know that every verse here is for us to apply? Application. Amen. Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are honest, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of what? Good report, if there is any virtue and if there is any praise, think on these things. You might be going through hell or, or high water, but you still got to keep a godly frame of mind. Amen? Yeah. 
Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there, there, there may be people around you that will be speaking negative. Oh, you'll never get that house, or, 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 or you're going to go into foreclosure, or, 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 or you're not going to have enough money for your wedding, and, and, and such and such. And all these thoughts are running in, in process trying to discourage us, amen? And that's not God. I said, that's not God. God will not say, you know what, uh, you don't have enough money. God says, I am more than enough. I am your Amen. provider. Amen. 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 Those, those negative things that you'll never get a job, uh, you'll never finish school, uh, you'll never get your shift change. Don't listen to that, Ron. Your shift change is coming, but it's on God's time. You've got to understand, if you are born again, if you're if you're saved, if you love the Lord, uh, that, that it's on God's timing. Amen? Amen? Amen. Not, not We can't have everything when we want it. Man, I want some stuff I've been waiting for for a long time. <laughs> and the enemy likes to tell me, you know what, you'll never have that. But that's not what God's word says. That's why it's important for us to be in this word so it'll brainwash us, right. blood wash us, mouth wash us. Mm. And heart cleanse us. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 Am I going to get fired up over this Amen. or what? <laughs> Amen? So make sure that the thoughts that enter your mind fall in this category. Is it true? If it's true, it's from God. And I don't mean, well, the truth is, you know what, you know what, you've been a loser all, all your life. <laughs> Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? Some people will keep preaching the truth from the back <clears throat> to you. But they don't even know what God's doing in your life. Amen. Well, you've been bankrupt four times before, and you'll stay bankrupt another four times. Amen. Is that true? No. And we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Amen. Amen. Sometimes that's why we've got to shut down, shut off, and get away from the naysayers. And, the, and you even got to get away from your own mind at times. Your mind can play tricks on you. But we're supposed to have the mind of Christ, amen? That's why it's important that we do this. That's why we meet here on Tuesday. Yeah. That's why we're in there on Wednesdays and Sundays, but that's not going to get us. That will not get us through a seven-day week. Mm -hmm. We've got to do this on our own. Yeah. We have to. We have to do this on our own. We eat every day, right? Yeah. And if somebody doesn't cook for us, what, what do we do? We make our own. Exactly. Right? <laughs> you, you make your own. It might be a cup of soup, but you made a cup of soup for body nour nourishment, right? Yeah. Well, the same way here. You take a proverb, a, a verse, and chew on it, and ask God to, to help you to yeah. cleanse your mind and, and to cast out those negative thoughts. Amen? Amen. 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 We all battle with them. We all battle with them throughout the day at our work. Amen? So finally, brothers, whatever things are true, is God true? Yes. Man. Listen to him. Yeah. Okay? Whatever things are honest, is God honest? Yes. Yeah. Stick with him then. Mm -hmm. Whatever things are just, is God just? Yes. Then just stick around with him. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever things are pure, God's word is pure. Yes. Yeah. It's pure. It's not stepped on. It's not cut. It's not watered down. It's a pure living word. Amen? Mm -hmm. Whatever things are lovely. Whatever things are of a, of a good report. This has a lot of good report in it. A lot of good report in it. If maybe you're struggling with, with, with a doctor's report, read the great physician's report. Amen? And whatever... Where are we at? Okay. If there is any virtue and if there is any praise, think on these things. Amen? Make sure that the thoughts that enter our mind fall into this category. Does it line up with God? Is it lining up with God? If it's not, tell God, you know what, if this is not from you, take it away from me. Mm -hmm. Take, cleanse my mind. Sometimes we just need to ask God to, to man, confess our sins, step one. Mm -hmm. Man, I keep thinking about this. It's a sin to be thinking negative. Mm -hmm. It's a sin. It's not pleasing to God. It doesn't glorify God because if we're thinking the opposite of Philippians 4 8, it's not glorifying God in us. Amen? Does this make sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay, number three. We're going to go deep now. Number three. 
Somebody want to go deep? Man. Man. Okay, only four of us. Do you mean deep as getting spanked? No, no, no. <laughs> I'm really hoping this will help. It might, it might spank us, but you know, God loves us. He has discipline. Number three, premeditated sin will invite demons. Premeditated sin will invite demons. Amen. Thank you. Premeditated sin will invite demons. Keep your plans holy and pleasing to God. I'll let you guys chew on that. I'm, trying, I'm trying to even spell this word, my brother. Premeditated? I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> it, didn't say, it didn't say medicate before. Okay. Premeditated sin that we're thinking about ahead of time. Hmm, I could do this. See, what we do when nobody's around really reveals who we are to him. That one was for him. Okay? Premeditated sin will invite demons. Keep your plans holy and pleasing to God. How many want to please God? We've got to keep our plans holy. Amen? Do, I have to re do you want me to repeat that again? Premeditated sin will invite demons. Keep your plans holy and pleasing to God. Amen? You there? We're good? Yes. Okay. 1 John 5, 3. <coughs> Go to 1 John 5, 3. It's always there. Hmm. <laughs> 1 John 5, 3. Premeditated sin will invite demons. We don't want, we don't need any more demons than, than we got already fighting with us. Amen. <laughs> well, what do I mean by premeditated? Thinking ahead of time about the sin that I really like to do that nobody really knows about, and I go away and do, or I go in my room and do, or I go in the kitchen and do, wherever it might be. Okay? Premeditated sin will invite demons. Keep your plans holy and pleasing to God. Now, 1 John 5, 3. We there? Okay. For this is the love of God. Isn't, isn't that a good thing? For this is the love of God. That we keep what? His commandments. And His commandments are not burdensome. Amen? If we love God, those commandments are not burdensome to us. Yeah. Oh God, I gotta love my neighbor as myself. Shoot, I can't even love myself that well. And I'm supposed to love my neighbor. Who's your neighbor? The ones that you dwell with. Yeah. <clears throat> the ones you dwell with. Amen. The ones you live with. If you can live with the lo love the ones that you live with, you'll be able to love the ones that don't live with you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, there's an awesome promise that goes with keeping his commandments and doing those things that please him. Ever broke his commandments and you're not happy? Yeah. 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 And everybody says yes? Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but it's awesome when we can keep his commandments. Because it, it pleases God, amen? Yeah. And, and it brings a peace to our heart. Yeah. When, when, when your mind is saying, you know what, I'd really like to give him a piece of my mind. But you don't, and you give them a piece of God's heart that's in you. That's pleasing to God. Amen? It's hard work. It takes hard work to do that. Amen? It takes hard work. See, if you, if you want to give them a piece of your mind, it's because you're not doing Philippians 4 8. You're stinking thinking. Amen? But if you give them a piece of God's heart that's in you, then you're operating in the anointing of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and the good thing is, you didn't you didn't do how you felt, but you did what God would do. Yeah, I'm right. starting to realize, I keep asking God to help me, to help me, to help me, to help me in certain areas. 
and, and I'm starting to see he's saying, Jim, be like me. <coughs> and I'm not arguing with him, but he just wants us to be like him. So I start to think, what would, first I'd say, what would Pastor do in certain situations? Because he's a good example. It's a great example to me because I see how he operates. But then I think at another level, what would Jesus do? Because Jesus gives us our pastor as an example on what to do. The book of Acts. Amen? Acts means to do something. Amen? Is this making sense? Yes. So, keeping his commandments and doing those things that please him, and whatever we ask, we will receive. 1 John 3.22. Go back a couple of chapters. 1 John 3.22. When we, when we please God, we can ask. You understand what I'm saying? When we please God, we boldly come to the throne of grace and ask him. But when we're not pleasing to God, we kind of like, mm, I know I haven't been such a, a, a good husband lately, but Lord, can you do this for me? Can you help me? Can you? I really don't confess that way, but I already know I've been a bad guy. You understand what I'm saying? But when you know you've been a good child, a, a, a good boy or a good girl, you come and you expect. Amen? Okay. 1 John 3.22, are we there? Yeah. And whatever we ask, we will receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight. Amen? Focus on pleasing God. Focus on pleasing God. My son just talked to me a little bit about his move and... He told me, he goes, I hope you're not upset with me moving because he's moving a little bit of ways in Riverside. And, and uh, I, go, I go, you know, you're a young family. You need to do this for your young family. It's affordable out there. He goes, well, not everybody is, is uh, you know, supporting me. And, and they think that I'm not hearing God. And and, uh, and I told him, I go, you know what? Quit worrying about what people say and worry about what God right. Please God and, and God will give you favor yeah. to people. Yeah. And, and, and that's the thing is, we're so busy worried about about who's going to be happy with us when I, we just need to please him and he'll give us favor with those Amen. that we need favor from. Amen. Amen. Your, your God, godly decision that you make is not always going to be a popular decision. That's right. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. Your, your godly decision, that, that choices that you make are not always going to, not everybody is going to celebrate you. Do you, you understand what I'm say, saying? Yeah. Not everybody, as long as God celebrates you and puts a, a, a party crown on your head and, and, <laughs> and puts a robe of righteousness around you, that's all you need. Mm -hmm. That's all you need. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Not everybody's going to celebrate your God-given decision. Yeah. And some Christians won't either. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. But as long as you've heard from God and God told you to do this, really, you can't go wrong. Right. Amen. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I'd rather have favor with God than favor with man because the favor of man will, will, will kind of just water off. Right. It'll run off like water. Mm -hmm. But the favor of God is overflowing abundant, right. abundantly. It, it, it overflows. It, 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 it's more than enough. It's exceedingly abundantly what we could even ask. Amen. So don't worry what people say. You do. Well, you should have told them how you really felt, but that's not what God wanted me. Well, I would have done that. That's why I had to do it, because you would have done something else. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Does this make sense? Yes. yes. So focus on pleasing God. Number four. Whew, we got a lot of time. Number four. We ready? Mm -hmm. Anticipate increased increase freedom as you walk in obedience. Anticipate increased freedom as you walk in obedience. How do you spell anticipate? A N T I C I P A T E. Anticipate. Mm -hmm. 
participate, increase freedom as you walk in, in obedience. This is basic, basic teaching, but you know what? It, it's going to help us. I know we used to usually be preaching and stuff, but I, I believe this is good for us. It'll get us back on track, or it'll gauge us if we're on track and how how lined up we are. Amen? Is this okay? Yeah, Anticip anticipate increased freedom as you walk in obedience. What do I mean by anticipate? Expect. Mm -hmm. Expect. Anticipation is like you've got ansias that you're going to... I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Like the like LA's been waiting for an NFL team and they're here now. Yeah. So now everybody's in anticipation. And, and they're, they're, they're waiting for 9-11, 17, for them to come, 16 to, to for opening day. But but what 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 I'm saying is when you when we walk in obedience, we can expect excitingly what God is gonna do for us. Amen. Anticipate increased freedom as we walk in obedience. So, everybody got that down? Yes. Yeah. Okay. We must learn to dismiss immediately painful memories of our past and live in an anticipation of life without bondage. Amen? I'll read that again. We must learn to dismiss immediately, not when you feel like it. Immediately, painful memories of our past and live in expectation of life without bondage. It's your God-given right to be free. Yeah. I said it's our God-given right to be free, to be liberated. Do not let anybody contain you because of a memory or what's going on now. Don't let anybody contain you in a certain <laughs> space. And that's what you're limited to because of what's holding back. Amen? Amen. And whether it's your home, your church, your, your, your business, your job, or where you shop, God has given you the ability to be free. Mm -hmm. Amen? To be free and to be able to walk in authority and not be intimidated by the enemy. Yes. Some people will not go on a certain side of the church because somebody has been there for a while that they have not uh, gotten along with, so they're contained to the left side of the church, and they'll walk through. And I'm not talking about nobody. And they'll walk through, and they'll. And what it is is the enemy has them contained in that. I choose to say this is my house. I walk wherever I want in my house. Mm -hmm. you, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. you, you you understand even in our own homes where we live, because when we walk in an area, we have to. Uh, understand that we don't like certain things at home. The way certain things are done at home. So we stay confined to one area so there's no conflict. Wow. When really God wants to deliver me, come out, be obedient, and be delivered and set free. Amen? Amen? Can you repeat that part again? Um, what I read? Yeah. Okay, that, because whatever I said, <laughs> <laughs> you got to get it. I just wanted to write that down. Okay, all right. Okay, you must learn to dismiss, okay? Immediately. What is immediately? Right now. Right now, okay? Painful memories of your past and live in, a, in anticipation of life without bondage, Okay? Your of your past and live in anticipation of life without bondage. What does that mean? Being shackled down for some reason. Being shackled down for some reason. Maybe you abandoned somebody, a, 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 a child, and and and. And you feel still feel bad about it. God, let God deliver you from that. You understand what I'm saying? When when Christ died at the cross and, and we accepted His forgiveness, we, we we accepted full forgiveness, no more guilt. 
If you're feeling guilty because of something that ha has happened in the, in the past, that's not God. God the, the Spirit of God does not condemn us. The Spirit of God does not make us feel guilty. The Spirit of God convicts us and tells us, come on, let's do this thing. The Spirit of God will not push you away, believer. Will not push you away. It wants to draw you closer and push that thing that help is holding you down or holding you back or have you shackled to set you free, to set us free. Mm -hmm. Amen? Is this making sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we must learn to immediately dismiss the, the painful memories. Immediately dismiss things that are out of our control. I don't know if you know this, but since, since we've been born again, uh, you, we're, we, we're not in control anymore. And now that we're sober and clean and we're not numb on, on drugs and stuff, we, our senses feel more now. We're more aware of what's going on be, rather than before how we were intoxicated and kind of stumbled through and we didn't, we, we really didn't care. Now all of a sudden we care because we have a clear, clear mind. And we care so much at times that we want to control everything. No? Mm -hmm. I know I do. Yeah. I want to control everything. <laughs> I'm, I want to control so much at times I'm out of control. Mm. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. 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 All right. We okay? <laughs> so Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Philippians 3, 13, and 14. How many want to be free? We got we got to apply these things, okay? We have to apply these things. Boy, let me tell you, somebody else could teach this. I'd be sitting right there, mm -hmm. listening to this. But I mean, I, I believe the Holy Ghost is teaching me a few things right now too. Ever walk into the house and things are not the way you like it, and you want to take control of everything? Mm -hmm. Okay, just me. And the Spirit of the Lord says, just be quiet. Because all you're going to do is raise chaos. Just be quiet. Just be quiet. Everything's going to be okay. Just be quiet. You can't be in control of everything. I'm in control. Don't worry. You're not God. And if you are God, you're messing everything up because you don't know how to walk through the house. Amen? It isn't Amen. ministering to anybody because yeah. that's the truth. And, and if you realize, even though you might not like the surroundings of, 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 of the environment at times, if you keep your peace, God will fight your battle. Amen. Because once you lose your cool, then you've got a battle with those that you live with. Uh, at your business, at your job, uh, wherever. But if you keep your cool, Amen? Because we're already in this frame of mind because it's been going on day after day after day after day after day. And day after day for 366 days a year, you have, you, you, you've been fighting this battle and this battle it hasn't been won because you're fighting it according to the flesh, according to the mind, instead of according to the Spirit of God. Amen? Man, you guys are making me work tonight. <laughs> So we're there at Philippians 3, 13 and 14? Okay. Here Paul says, Brothers, I do not count myself as to have attained. That means that I don't, I don't have it all. I ain't got it all together. And just because we're behind here doesn't mean we have it all together. We're quite about the most messed up people sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we choose to let God use us anyway. And, and if you think you're too messed up to, to be used by God, I want you to think about Abraham. Abraham lied. Jacob was a conniver. <laughs> Noah was a drunk. You know what I'm saying? Even uh, Rahab, she was a uh, lo and behold. And God still used her. Amen? God is looking for, for those that are available. They're, he's not looking for perfect people. Amen? Yeah. God can use you Believe me, if God can use me, he can use you. <laughs> Amen? And, and I'm not joking about that. Don't let the enemy tell you that he, God can't use you. You have a gift that God has in place in you 
that he wants to use for his glory. Amen? Yeah, Amen? Yeah. So some of you want to probably get in, in into a little bit more ministry or maybe in ministry uh, uh, to start with, and, and the enemy is sitting there playing with your mind, saying, oh, they, 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 they have all the spots filled. You're new. You don't need to be here. Well, you just sit here and get fed. Oh. Amen? God needs faithful people. Faithful and available, teachable people, fat people. Faithful, available, and teachable. Amen? We okay? Amen. So, brothers, I do not count myself to have attained, but this is one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Amen. Amen? Forgetting those things for which are behind. Maybe you blew it on the way over here. Forget it. Move ahead. Amen? I press toward the goal to the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. It didn't say, I stroll towards the goal. It said, I press because you know what? We've got to press in. Mm -hmm. I said, we've got to press in. That the more faithful you become in the ministry and your God calling, and even to just to God alone is going to cause havoc in your life. Amen? It's going to cause... Uh, a little turmoil, a little struggle, a little tribulation, a little tornado every so often, but you've got to keep pressing in. No matter how you feel. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 6 says, it's not by might, not by power, not by how, how my wife is treating me, not how, how my fiance is treating me, it's not how my job treated me, it's by the Spirit of God that gives me the power to move forward and press on to that prize that God has. Amen. Remember eating Cracker Jacks? Oh, yeah. You get through that box mm -hmm. just for the prize. And you were, you were waiting in anticipation to get that prize in the Cracker Jack box. It's the same way, but even greater as you press in. And, and you go through the riffraff and the trials and tribulations, challenges and obstacles and disappointments and discourages discouragement that keeps you moving forward. Amen? Amen. Amen. You, you understand that this is this is a, a this is a lifestyle. It's not a club. It's not it's not a seasonal thing. This is for life, for yeah. forever. We're gonna lay our crown down at, at the feet of Jesus when we get to heaven, and they're gonna be, He's gonna be able to say, "Well done, good and faithful servant." Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Well done. You're not gonna be well done in hell. You're gonna be well done, good and faithful ser servant in heaven. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. 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 Number five. You're going to make me thirsty. <laughs> never. I got some idea. Number five. Never forget that Satan and all of his demons are liars. Did you know that? Yeah. I mean, did you really know that? Yeah. I mean, truly, truly know that. Yeah. For real? <laughs> because sometimes we're listening to the lion. Yeah. Yeah. You get home and you're all worn out. Sometimes we'll sit in church listening to the liar rather than hearing the truth. Sometimes we'll sit in here listening to the liar rather than paying attention to what God has to say. That's why it's important that we pray that we get the presence of God in here. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Never forget that Satan and all of his demons are liars. <laughs> Amen. That's the truth. See, yeah, that's the truth. It's, you know, every time the devil opens his mouth, it's a lie. Don't believe it. Every time God opens his mouth, believe it. God or Satan. Amen. And then you get to your, your story to yourself. And boy, you better have a lot of this so you can believe it. Amen. Because what goes in, got to come out. What inputs in this mobile device, <laughs> this mobile church, is what's going to come out. Okay? Never forget that Satan and all of his demons are liars. Learn to recognize the lie. Learn to recognize the lie. 
you know, certain people have certain characteristics, or even our kids when they're young, they, you know they're lying. Right? Yep. Ain't no yep. different. Ain't no different. God gave us that ability to be able to tell when our children <clears throat> or somebody's lying to us. Yep. So that gift, we're able to learn to use it to our ability to realize, is that God? Or is that the devil? If it's truth, it's God. If it's a lie, it's the devil. People say, well, you know, the devil's been telling me lies. Mm -hmm. I want to let him tell, tell me right. what the devil's been telling me. It's all lies. Yep. Right. Well, the devil's been, what is God telling you? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Read this and find out what he's telling you. You, you hear too many lies. Well, the devil took lies. And it's annoying how I'm saying that, but now, that's all that the devil does is lie to you. Yeah. You won't be healed. You don't have enough money. You don't have this. You can't do this. You can't do that. You're no good. That's all from the devil. Amen? Nothing but lies. Amen? Now here we go. You ready? Go to John 8.44. And you know what? The devil's a good liar. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good liar. Yep. You know, that's a, I think the only thing good he, that he does yeah. is lie. Because that's what he does. He's doing his job. Amen? That's what his assignment is. Is to lie and deceive, cheat and kill people's dreams. Destroy families. The lie. 844. John 8:44. When he lies, he speaks from his own nature. You know he lied in heaven before he got casted out. He said, "I'm going to be." Bye bye. I, 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 I. That's how he went down. He said, "I am going to be like the Most High." That was a lie. God could not could not allow lie lying to dwell in heaven. So he flipped them out. Amen? There is only truth in heaven. Amen? We okay? So when he lies, he speaks from his own nature. That's all he does. That's all he knows how to do is lie. Okay? For he is a liar and the father of lies. Not only is he a liar, but he's the hefe. He's the father of lies. Okay? Now, one of the favorite points of demons is to try to convince us that what took place was only emotional and that you are still in the enemy's grip. Okay? His best trick is to make you feel that you didn't get touched from God. You haven't, you, you, you haven't given your life to God. Even when God delivers you, uh, when, when you get prayed for, or, or maybe you get delivered and, and praise and worship, they'll say, it was just a feeling. Mm. It was just, that's just how you're feeling. Those, those tears that you were crying, those were just tears because you haven't cried in a long time. Not realizing that God allowed you to cry so you could empty yourself and get cleansed so he could refill you. Mm -hmm. Amen. So the devil will sit there and say, well, you know what? Uh, even, he'll even play with us while we pray for people. You know what? They didn't get their breakthrough. Mm. They did not get their breakthrough. And I choose to believe every time I lay hands on somebody or every time I pray for, for you or anybody else that to receive the breakthrough. Mm. If I don't believe that way, I might as well just not say, I am not doing this. Because it's not fair to who I'm praying for. It's not fair to you. Mm -hmm. And it's not fair to God. Because we're discounting. His power, because we choose not to believe, or we choose to entertain the thought of the lie that the devil has put in our mind. Amen? Are we okay? So one of the favorite points of demons is to try to convince you that what took place was only emotional and that you are still in the, in the enemy's grip. Now James 4, 7, and 8. James 4, 7 and 8. The devil will try to convince you God confirms to you. 
Amen? The devil will try to convince you it's okay to go mess around. But God is confirming his word. You got a ring on that finger. Go pray. Don't play. <laughs> Amen? 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 It's okay? Yeah. All right? Man, this is good. good. James 4, 7, and 8. Are we there? It says, Therefore, submit yourselves to God. That's the first step in that verse. Okay? The first step is to submit yourselves to God. <coughs> Amen? Submit to God. Resist the devil. That's step two. Okay? And he will flee from you. That's step three, and that's the final step. Notice, Father, Son, Holy Ghost, submit, resist, and he'll flee. Don't, don't resist the devil on your own. <clears throat> I'll say that again. Do not try to resist the devil under your own flesh, <clears throat> under natural circumstances. It has to be supernatural. God is supernatural power. Amen? That's why it, it says in James 4, 7, it says, therefore submit yourself to God. I'm struggling with it. I'm battling with it. And probably the Spirit of the Lord will say, why are you there then? You know your weakness. That's what he tells me. Okay? But you understand what I'm saying? When you submit yourself to God, when, when you come to God saying, I'm struggling in this area, this, I'm battling with this, now, see, you're under the shadow of the Almighty, of the Almighty, so that you can resist the devil in the power of his might. Amen? In the supernatural. <coughs> if you try resisting the devil in the natural, not going to work. You're going to fall right into him. Amen? But it, as, as it says, the number one is submit yourself to God. We submit. That's the first step, Lydia. Okay? And then the second step is resist the devil. Now I can resist the devil because my, my father is hiding me. He's my rear guard. He's my breastplate. He's my helmet of salvation. He's the sword of the spirit for me. Now I've got power. Amen. Now, now I can, maybe I need to call a, a couple of people over to, to come in agreement with me because I'm struggling in this area right now. I want to give somebody a piece of my mind, but, but God is telling me to give a piece of my heart. So I need to hang around somebody to, to pray for me. That's still a shadow. Submitting to God. Amen. Amen. Okay? So it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. We're waiting for God to draw near to us, but we won't get close to him. You understand what I'm saying? It's kind of like, i got to come up to her, but she, she probably want to come up to me too. When she doesn't want... It's okay. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? If you draw near... To God, he will come near to you. Yeah. But if you're trying to fight this off in the flesh, he's not going to come near because he's waiting for us to call upon our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. Help me. Okay. Help me. I'm in, I'm in trouble. Mm -hmm. Help me. Help me, Lord, with, with my heart because I'm struggling right now. Mm -hmm. Whatever that, 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 that situation or that, that temptation is, call unto him, draw near to him. Amen? Is this making sense? Yes. yes. So he will draw near to us. Now he goes, the writer goes on and says, Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. We lie because of temptation. We start thinking about temptation, but we know God God will help us, but we're like, oh, sin is good, but it's good for a season. That season's over. Yeah. I said that season's yeah. over. Yeah. 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 Amen. Yeah. Sin is good, but it, it was good. It was, right? Wasn't it mm -hmm. fun before we got born? I thought it was. Yeah. Yeah. I thought it was. Thank God I'm still alive. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It was good for a season, and we enjoyed that time. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to enjoy a, a blessed, abundant, yeah. spirit-filled, powerful, anointed, God-given life now. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be a lot better than what we used to do. Amen? Yeah. Amen? Amen. Amen? All right. Learn to recognize his lies. If it's not building you up, it's not God. Every time the devil opens his mouth, lie. Lie. That's all he does. He cannot tell you a half-truth either. Because a half-truth is a whole lie. Amen? Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to do one more. Number six. Trust God daily to help you make correct choices, and He will. Trust God. Don't trust your job. Don't trust your bank account. Trust God daily to help you make correct choices. And He will. He will only help us make correct choices if, uh, if we trust Him. <coughs> trust God daily to help you make correct choices. Making the right decisions. And he will. Galatians 3.3 3. Every day we got to trust God. Every day. Every day we got to trust God. We trust that when we get in our car to go to work, it's going to start. <coughs> right? Yeah. Right? Right? We trust when we get up in the morning that the hot water heater is working good and we get a hot, hot shower, right? Yeah. Right? We trust that the barista at Starbucks is going to give us our, our coffee just the way we like it, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Well, if we trust that much in that, how much more should we trust in God? Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Trust God daily to help you make, help us make correct choices and He will. That's what I like. If we trust, He will help us. Galatians 3.3, 3. I'm going to read this. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Amen. Having begun in the Spirit, are you now being perfected by the flesh? Like I said earlier, you know, that there's things that we're waiting on for God and we're wait we think it's too long, but God knows when the right time to release <coughs> what we've been asking for. Some people just can't seem to, to wait and they go on their own understanding and go refi their house. Which is a big choice. Mm -hmm. Amen. When God has already spoken and said, don't do that. I'm going to provide for you. Just wait. Just wait. Do not get into debt. I will provide. Amen. Amen. But in the spirit, we, we agree with that, but when it comes to Wanting, we start acting in the flesh. The natural eye. The natural eye will show us what, what we really desire, but the supernatural ear and eye will show us it's coming. Wait. Some of us can't wait. So we move ahead of God. In the natural. Amen? So trust God daily to help you make Correct choices, and He will. He will. God will because it's His desire yes. to help us live a fruitful life, mm -hmm. a, a, a God glorifying life. Amen? Amen? And we'll stop right there. That's number six. And we'll pick up next week. How's that? Yes. Did we learn something? Yes. yes. All right. Let's all stand and we'll close the prayer.